Here is a posterior view of the larynx. Over here we have the hyoid bone. Right over here is the epiglottis. Here is the thyroid cartilage, which is open in the back. Right here, this is the wide part of the cricoid cartilage. And over here, we have two paired pieces of cartilage which rest on top of the cricoid. These are the arytenoid cartilages. And the arytenoid cartilages are going to control the opening between the two vocal folds, which is called the glottis. These swivel, and because of their attachment to the vocal ligaments, they will adjust that opening, either close it or open it, or adjust the, the size of the opening. On the very tips of the arytenoid cartilages, you can see the horn-like corniculate cartilages. So if we go a little bit closer, it looks like number 33 represents the carniculate cartilage on this model. You can see on this side, there are muscles that are going to be attaching to the arytenoids. You have transverse arytenoids and oblique arytenoids, which are going to adjust the, the opening, this glottis, uh, by causing these arytenoids to swivel. Below, you can see that we have, on the cricoid cartilage, we have the cricoarytenoid muscle, which is also going to be a way of controlling these uh, arytenoid pieces of cartilage. Now, on this model, you do not see the cuneiform pieces of cartilage. They would be present within a fold of mucous membrane that it would extend from the arytenoid cartilages to the epiglottis. The glottis, as we already noted, can be opened uh, to various degrees. And the strings that you see attached to the arytenoid cartilages right over here, if you pull on those strings, and uh, in this model you have to do so gently, you'll notice that you can, the arytenoids will swivel and you can see that the opening of the glottis changes.